Now that we have our letterhead made, we are ready to start typing our letter. So the first thing that we need to do is apply a style. We need to have our insertion point here on the first row where we see that paragraph symbol. And while we are there, we're going to look up here at our styles on our home ribbon. And you will see that right now the normal style is selected. We are going to change that to the no spacing style because our letter is only going to be single spaced. So now that we have um, our style set properly, we are going to set our tab stops. We are going to use our ruler bar to set our tab stops, and we need to set a tab stop at the three and a half inch mark on our ruler. Um, so up here on the top left hand corner of our workspace, you will see the little icon for our tabs and that is the little L. So it's showing us that if we click on our ruler bar, we will be putting in a left tab. You will see in your textbook um, on page WD3-26 um, that there are uh, there is a table there that shows you um, or it explains to you what all the different tabs um, that are available to you. So we're going to take our mouse, put it over here on the three and a half inch mark on our ruler bar, and then we're just going to click once, and you will see that that little L shows up there on our ruler bar. Now that we have that set, we are um, ready to use our tab. So here on our first row, where our insertion point is, um, the first thing that we need to do is press the enter key one time, and it's going to leave a blank line at the top of this. Then we're going to press the tab key, and this is where our date will be entered. And instead of just typing our date, we are going to um, use a date function um, that is in Microsoft Word. So we need to go to our insert menu. And then over on the right hand side in the text section of this insert ribbon, you will see a date and time button. So if we click on that, it opens up our date and time dialog box. And because this is a letter, we are going to use the option where the month is spelled out. And then we have um, the date and a four digit year. So we'll click on OK and now our date has been entered in there. Um, let me go back to that. Um, the one thing that I also need to show you here is um, the update automatically box. We want to make sure we remove that check mark um, because that will um, change the date every time this document is opened up. And most of the time when you're writing the letter, you want that date to remain the same so that you know when that date or when that letter was um, actually sent. So you want to make sure you take that update automatically off. Now that's going to put in a second one. So I'm just going to undo both of those options and I'll try again a third time and maybe I'll get it right. So we're going to do September the 16th and make sure this update automatically does not have the check mark in it and then we'll say okay. So now we're in a good spot. We're going to press the enter key and we need to press it um, A couple more times. So you should have um, the date with the paragraph sign after it, and then you will have two blank lines with paragraphs. And so on this third one is where we're going to type our inside address. And these we're just going to enter one time at the end of each row.
Now, after we have the um, address put in, we will press the Enter key twice. That's going to leave one blank line before we type our salutation. Make sure you put a comma after Caleb. We'll press Enter twice. And this is where um, we'll leave that one blank line before we start typing the text or the body of our um, letter. Now we have typed the um, first paragraph and then the beginning or, or that, that first line of the second paragraph. You need to make sure that you've put a colon after the word dates and then you've pressed the enter key twice. What this is going to do is leave one blank line between that last line that we typed and the table that we're getting ready to put in. So your table, as we create this, um, it's basically going to create a grid of rows and columns. Where the rows and columns intersect, they create a small rectangle, and those are called cells. Um, the um, table size is referred to as the dimensions of the table. So we're going to have a three column by, I think, five row um, table. Now, when they have us insert our table, they only have us insert one row with three columns. And you can do that, or you can go ahead and, and put in the five columns, or the, yeah, the five rows. Um, it doesn't matter, but we're gonna get three columns. So um, you wanna make sure, um, you might wanna scroll up so you can see more of the workspace that you're, you're going to be creating this table in. So if you're not on the insert um, ribbon, go ahead and click that insert. And then we're going to um, click on the table button and then we can just click three by one um, for our table. Now that we have that table in our document, um, I'll point out a couple of things to you because I do have my non-printing characters on um, that show hide button in the paragraph section on our home ribbon, which is why we're seeing these paragraph signs. When we're inside a table, you'll see um, this little circle with four lines coming out of it. That Those signify the end of cell. Um, so if you click in each cell, your insertion point will be on the left-hand side of that. Then at the very end, you have an end of um, row uh, cell. Or end of row marker. Um, so if I have these turned off, you won't see any of that. Um, if you do see this four-headed arrow um, on the top left-hand corner, that 
just allows you to move your table to different locations. I don't recommend doing that. Um, I, I never have that actually work to put the table exactly where I want it. Well, occasionally I do, but um, it is a way to move your table around, but um, it can it can mess things up um, also. So, but that if you see that, that's what that means. We are getting ready to enter um, the information into this. So our first row is going to um, contain what we call our headers. So we are going to type the word date uh, in that first cell. Then we'll press the tab, which will move us to that um, heading of our second column. And this is going to be event. And we'll tab one more time and type in notes. Now to add the next row, all we need to do is press the tab key one more time and we have a new row entered. And if you are not exactly sure how many rows you're going to need as you're entering your data, it's okay to just put that one row in with your three columns because you can add a row each time by pressing the tab key um, at the end. So I'll take some time here and go ahead and type this information in. Um, I know I pointed out in class that where we type July 12-16, um, there is a space after the word July, but not between the hyphens before and after 16. So make sure that you do not get extra spaces um, in there. Okay, so if I click on my show hide um, button again, you will see that this matches more what's in the textbook because you see those end of cell marks and end of row marks um, outside of the table that we just created. All right, so you want to check that for spelling errors, typing errors um, that you might or might not have in there. Um, the next thing we're going to learn how to do is apply a style. Um, to our table. Um, applying a style is just a quick and easy way to dress up your um, table that you've created and make it look a little bit more professional. So um, when you are applying a style, it doesn't matter where you are um, as long as you're somewhere in the table. So if I click up here out of the table, then you'll notice that I do not have my um, table tools design or layout tabs that's up here. So I have to be somewhere in my table for those um, two tabs to be showing. So we're gonna make sure that we are on the design tab in our table tools. Um, and don't get this confused with the design tab on our regular ribbon. Um, make sure you're in the table tools design tab. Then you will see all the different table styles that are listed here. Um, if you click the more button, you will see that they are um, grouped into different um, categories. And this will help you find the exact one that you are looking for. Um, we are going to find the grid table one, light accent two. 
So you'll see here that you have plane tables, you have grid tables, and you have list tables. So we know we want to be in the grid table. Um, and then we'll be able to find the um, light. And then accent two is going to be this orange color. So if you um, go to one of the orange colors, um, this first one is the grid table one light accent two. So if you click on some of the others, you'll see this is a grid table three accent two. So these are ones, these are probably the twos, three, four, five, six, seven. So this would be grid table seven, colorful accent two. So that just kind of gives you an idea of how these things are laid out here. So we want the first one, grid table one, light accent two. We are going to come over to the last column of our table. And if you position your mouse um, kind of by the top line of that last column, you'll see your um, mouse turn into a black arrow that's downward pointing. When you click um, on that column with that black down pointing arrow, it selects your entire column. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna italicize this. So with your mini toolbar, you can just click the I, you can do control I, go back up to your home ribbon and use the button up there. In your textbook, it gives you a table where um, it gives some explanations of different ways to select contents in a table. So like we just did, we selected an entire column there. It gives you some information um, on how you can select other things. Okay, we have decided, discovered that we left something out of our table, and so we need to insert a row in the appropriate place to be able to give um, an, another line of data in there. So we want to put our pointer um, on the left-hand side of the table between the rows um, where we want to insert our new row. So this is going to be between the August 16-17 and August 23rd. Um, and so if you put your mouse um, in there, you will see, okay, I clicked on the August, I don't know, maybe I was not, okay. So yeah, you don't have to click on anything. You just have to get your mouse between them and to the left edge. And then you'll see a little plus sign show up. You can click that. Um, it's called an insert control that will insert a row between those two rows that we had um, on the top and bottom. Now you can also do this um, from the layout tab. Um, you will see that there are rows and columns here. You could um, you could have been in this August 23rd cell and and done insert a row above. Um, if you were in the August 16th and 17th, you could have done insert below. Likewise, you could insert columns to the left or right of where your cursor is as well. So on this new row, we are going to type. August 16 20. next part of your textbook um, talks about inserting columns in a table and then also talks about how to delete a table. Um, so we are ready to um, move on to the next part here where we're going to put in some more text. Um, so you should, if you have your show hide um, characters um, showing, 
you should see the paragraph sign right below the table that we just had. So we're going to put our insertion point there and we're going to press the enter key one time. So now we have a blank row above the table and below the table to help kind of um, make it to stand out. And then we'll type our next paragraph here. After you've typed the word website, you're going to press the enter key. And this is where we're going to type a bulleted list, um, but we're not going to use the bullet icon or the bullet button that we learned um, back in module one. We are going to make this list as we are, are typing on our keyboard. So to make that first bulleted um, item we are going to make an or use an asterisk so you can either shift and the letter eight or if you have your 10 keypad you can use the um, asterisk that's over there for the multiplication so once we have the asterisk typed then we press the space bar it automatically changes that into a bullet um, for us When you press your enter key, the next row will have a bullet automatically show up. So after we press the, after we've typed that last bullet that item, reserve your orientation dates. Um, you're going to press the enter key um, once. You'll have another row show up with a bullet. We're done with bullets, so we're going to press the enter key one more time. That turns those bullets off and it brings our um, insertion point back to that left edge so it doesn't have that indention anymore. Then we're ready to type um, our last sentence and then the um, complementary close and the signature block. So um, we want to press the enter key one more time so that we have a blank line between our bulleted items and our last sentence. exclamation point at the end of that sentence. We're going to press the enter key twice. It's going to leave a blank line for us. And then we are going to press our tab key, which is going to line up with that tab stop that we set up here on our three and a half inch mark on our ruler. And this is where we'll type our complimentary close, which is sincerely. And um, we will put a comma after that. And then we're going to press our enter key four times. We'll tab again, and this is where we'll do our signature block. Press your enter key and tab key, and then we're going to type the title. So that is our letter, but now we need to create the schedule that goes along with this. So we need to make sure that we go um, to a new page and start that new page. So we're going to put in um, a page break here. Um, and you can do this um, whichever way works best for you. Um, years and years and years ago when I was doing my grad work, I learned how to do this with the control enter key. So that is how I always do it. But you can come up to the insert ribbon um, and then you'll see here in the pages section that there is a page break. 
So you can do it that way as well. Um, when you have your non-printing characters showing, you will see that word um, or that um, identification of the page break has been inserted. You'll see it typed out there. Um, and then your insertion points on that new row. Um, I have taken the white space out um, so you don't see that. And that's why mine are, uh, whoops, that's why my document is showing with grief. Um, this right after this line where my page break um, is identified. So on the second page, um, we're going to type our heading in here. Um, and they, um, if you're not on your home ribbon, you might want to click on your home ribbon. We are going to center our text. Um, and then we also want this to be bold. We're going to change the font size to 36. and the font color to orange accent two. And then we want this to be the darker 25%. So where our insertion point is located right now, we are going to type orientation and registration. Press our enter key, and then we're going to type student schedule. So if we select both of these, we are going to add a paragraph border. Um, we are going to go to our paragraph section and then where we have our borders and shading, um, we're going to click that drop down arrow there and we'll go all the way to the bottom um, where it says borders and shading. And that opens up our borders and shading dialog box. Um, from this um, dialog box, we want to make sure that the borders tab is what is selected. And then we want to choose um, on the left-hand side, the, the presets there, we're going to choose a box because we want this all around the outside of this. And then we want to choose the fifth style in the style list to specify the border type. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So it should be the last one that's showing there. And then we want our color to be the orange accent two. So since it's just the accent two, it'll be that first one um, on that top row. We want to change the width to two and a quarter. Then we'll click OK. And you'll see that um, dashed border um, show up there. Then you can click anywhere in there to remove that um, selection of that text. We're going to put our insertion point here at the end of that um, second row of text after the word schedule. Um, then we're going to press our enter key. And then we're going to come back up like we did um, after our letterhead. And we're going to click the clear all formatting. So that's going to put that border back up underneath the word student schedule and we are ready to type the rest of this. All right. We um, also want to change our style back to this no spacing. So we'll click that um, and then we are ready to Um, change our font size up here to 14.
and we're going to press the enter key once so we have a blank line between that and then we're ready to type um, some information here um, for the students as they read through this schedule. We are going to go back up to that first paragraph that we typed and we are going to select the words two days. And we are going to underline these and we want to specify a, a certain underlined style. So when you come up to your um, home ribbon in your font section there, you will have you will click on the the drop down arrow by the U, and we want to choose the six underline style. So this is going to um, match the outline that we put um, around our title up here. And then if we come back up to our underline. Um, with those same words still selected, we're going to go down to the underlying color and we are going to select the accent to the orange accent to. Now with those two words selected, we are going to use our format painter um, to select the formatting from here and then apply it to the words dress accordingly in this second sentence. So we'll come up to our home ribbon. We're going to click on the format painter button. When you do that and you move your mouse back down into your text, you will see that your cursor um, changes from what is a regular I-beam when you're working in your text to an I-beam that has that paintbrush with it. So we're going to take our paintbrush over here to the um, letter D in dress, and we're just going to click and drag to the Y in accordingly. And now that has applied that um, dot dash underline, I think is what it's called, um, and the color of it. So we were able to copy this formatting and in one step apply two things. So otherwise we would have had to come up here and choose the dot dash and then go back up and choose the color again. So that is kind of a handy thing about the format painter. Um, and it's very helpful if you have several places that you want to apply that formatting to. We are ready to put in our um, smart art graphics. Um, okay, so I need to press my enter key one more time because I need to be on this blank row below that last sentence. Um, we're going to change this to center justification. And then we're going to come up to the insert tab. And this is where you'll see um, where we put our shape in earlier. You'll see the smart art button. When we click on that smart art button, it opens up this um, box of choices for us in the middle of our screen. 
you will see on the left hand side that right now all of the smart art graphics are selected so in the middle portion of this if you were to scroll down you would see there's all the list and then the process and then the cycle and so on. So if you know um, kind of an idea of what you're wanting to do, you can just click the specific one and then you'll see only those um, that are in that specific um, category. Um, we want to choose um, list over here on the left hand side. And then in the middle section, you will see one that says grouped. And okay, this one is it here, grouped list. So once we find grouped list, we will select that. And it kind of gives you a little preview over here on the right hand side and a little description. Um, that's what we want. So we'll click the OK button. And you will see now that you have basically three columns um, with three rows of text. Um, the first row being different than the, the second two. We know that we um, are only wanting two um, columns basically here. So we are going to have to get rid of some of our shapes. Um, so we're going to click on the edge of the shapes that says um, the word text. Um, that's in the rightmost group. So, um, the, the text in the blue box. That's what we're going to select. And then if we press our delete key, you'll see it removes that one text box. And now the other text box fills in and takes that entire space. Um, we're going to delete this other text box. And then we will um, select the light blue one that has a black text and we can delete it as well. So now you've seen the other shapes resize and fill in to take up the same amount of space that was there before. Um, we are going to need, if you've looked at that schedule, we are going to need to add some additional shapes um, because we have lots of things in our schedule. Um, so what we're going to do First, though, is we're going to click up here on the, the left hand side where it says text in black, and we are going to type day one. We'll click in the um, first box below that, and we're going to type in check hyphen in space, and then you're going to do open parentheses, 9 colon 0 0 hyphen 10 colon 0 0 and then close parentheses. Then we'll click on the next um, box down and add the information that goes in there. And you'll notice as you keep typing that um, everything is adjusting based on the amount of text that you're putting in there. Now, because we have our smart art um, shapes, our smart art graphics put in here, we also have a smart art tools um, design and format tab. So we want to make sure that the um, design ribbon is selected. And then um, we want to make sure that the shape that's in the left group where we are is what is selected. And then we're going to click the Add Shape button. So this is up here in the Create Graphics, which is on the far left-hand side. And we'll do, sorry, that's not what I wanted to do. Right below File um, is where it says Add Shape. So 
So then you will see a, an additional shape is selected there. So on this one, you will type lunch. So we need to add, I think, six more shapes. You can add them all at once if you want to, or you can add them individually, like they say, in the textbook. So then we're going to have to type all of this other information in. So oops, that's not the right one. Sorry. Then we'll come down to that next one. So we got the first day done. We'll come up to the second day and we'll type our heading in there. And then we can come down and type all of the information in there.
typing takes a little while to get all that in there, but we got that done. Um, we're going to change the colors of our smart art graphics now. Um, and so up here on your design tab, right below the word design, you should see the change colors. Um, now you do have to make sure that your smart art graphics are still selected or you won't see that. So um, we're going to click on change colors and then we're going to come down to colorful um, accent colors, that very first one. And then we are going to come into um, our, we're going to stay in the design tab and then um, the smart art styles gallery, we're going to find the subtle effect. Um, so you can maybe find that as you go through here um, or you can use your more button um, and um, it's going to be, you see there's different sections there that best match for the document or the 3D. Um, so you can kind of put on, put your mouse on those and see um, the live preview of those if you want to. Um, but in the end, we're going to choose subtle effect up here in the best match for document. That just kind of mutes all of that. We are going to um, go to our view button. And then if we select multiple pages, it'll show both of those pages there for us. And we can um, then we're going to click on our smart art graphic um, so that the whole thing is selected. And then they want us to We're going to drag the lower right sizing handle until it is um, what you well what you see on your next page in your um, so we want it to be about the same um, height take up the same amount of space as our letter so that's why we're looking at both both um, pages here so. Um, that takes care of that and you can click outside of that smart art graphic and see a couple of years matches that i don't think they give us a specific um, size for that so um okay we need to save our document all these changes that we've made if we haven't done that so far um and then the last part of this talks about um creating a um, or printing your letter and then creating an envelope. Um, and I showed you that in um, class the other day. 